Hello and welcome to this module on Parkinson's therapy. This video will not include levodopa and carbidopa. I've already made a video on that along with some basic concepts. So I suggest you watch that video before you go on with this video. Okay, so let's start. So before we start with anything else, like I did in my levodopa and carbidopa video, I'm going to explain some of the basic concepts, which include that the basal ganglia pathways are divided into direct pathway and indirect pathway. The direct pathway controls the voluntary movement in your body. The indirect pathway inhibits all the involuntary movements in your body. So example of this is whenever a movement is required, such as you want to move your right hand. If you want to move your right hand, the cortex releases glutamate and which stimulates both the indirect and the direct pathway in your basal ganglia. The basal ganglia serves to initiate movement, initiate motor movement. So you want to move your right hand and you want to keep everything else in your body still. So you're stimulating both the direct and the indirect pathway. The direct pathway moves my right hand. The indirect pathway keeps everything else still. So there's this balance in your body between the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. And both the direct and the indirect pathway are affected by dopamine and acetylcholine. Dopamine not only stimulates the direct pathway, but inhibits the indirect pathway. Acetylcholine stimulates the indirect pathway. So there's this balance. And let's say if dopamine is decreased, which it is in Parkinson's, so there's this imbalance in your body in which the indirect pathway will be acting more. And then you will have stuff like rigidity. Now let's look at tolcapone and enticapone. Before we understand this, you need to understand this illustration. This is the blood-brain barrier. Levodropa crosses the blood-brain barrier is converted into dopamine. But meanwhile, it's also converted by an enzyme known as COMT. You can remember this by remembering that tolcapone has an O its name. The enzyme has an O in its name, right? So tolcapone and enticapone inhibit COMT. What COMT does is that it converts levodopa into 3O methyldopa. This is uh, a less active form of dopamine. So what tolcapone does is that it inhibits the COMT enzyme, which reduces the veering off phenomena so that whenever you give levodopa, it stays there for longer. The half-life is essentially increased because you're decreasing the metabolism of the drug. It's, now, what you need to remember about tolcapone and, and tecapone is that it's hepatotoxic and hepatotoxic also contains two O's. So tolcapone, COMT, 3O methyldopa, hepatotoxic, all of the important stuff in this slide essentially contains an O. Now let's look at selegiline. Selegiline inhibits Mayo B. Mayo B I have denoted with this monster that eats up dopamine. So selegiline inhibits this monster, right? And it's used as an adjunct to levodopa therapy, meaning that the levodopa therapy is being used is just using this drug to reduce uh, phenomena such as varying of phenomena. Its adverse effects include dyskinesias, psychosis, and insomnia due to excess of dopamine in your brain. It inhibits Mayo A at high doses, which can cause severe hypertension. So you need to remember this. This is an important fact. It inhibits Mayo A at high doses, which can cause severe hypotension. Let's look at benztropine. Why is benztropine important? Benztropine is important because it'll help you understand the basic pathophysiology of Parkinson's. In Parkinson's, dopamine is decreased, whereas acetylcholine is increased, right? So as dopamine is decreased, now this dopamine to acetylcholine ratio is also decreased. You want to inhibit that excess acetylcholine in your body. Therefore, you're giving anti-muscarinics such as benztropine. It's an anti-muscarinic. It augments the dopaminergic transmission in your brain. It's helpful in controlling the tremors and jerking movements specifically, right? As I said, dopamine to acetylcholine ratio is decreased in Parkinson's. And then because it's an anti-muscarinic, it will have all of those anti-muscarinic adverse effects, which include dry as a bone due to decreased secretions in your body, hot as a hair, decreased heat response mechanisms, decreased sweating, blind as a bat, midriasis of your pupils, mad as a hatter, confusion, full as a flask, urinary retention. Your bladder is not contracting because you have decreased parasympathetic uh, activity in your body. Now let's look at amantadine, which is actually an antiviral drug which is used in Parkinson's, which blocks the muscarinic receptors, increases the dopamine release, and causes 
Levodopa reticularis. This is a very important and very specific side effects of amantadine that you need to remember, which is due to the disruption of the cutaneous blood supply uh, in your body. So you get this. I've added a picture here for you to remember this particular side effect because they might ask you about this in an exam. And it has anti-muscarinic effects. All of those anti-muscarinic effects that, that we just talked about a slide before. And then in the end, I've just added these for the sake of completion. They are your dopamine receptors agonist, premipexol, rupinarol, bromocryptine. And their side effects, of course, include dyskinesias and psychosis due to excess dopamine activity in your brain. Thank you so much for joining. If you haven't watched our video on levodopa and carbidopa, I'm going to add a link uh, in the description. Thank you so much for joining. Subscribe to my channel.